This is a great question. I We never discussed Starlink that much. Uh, Julie asks, what do we know about the power of Starlink Wi-Fi? My neighbor installed it last year. I became very symptomatic very fast. I actually had to leave. I am dizzy both inside and outside. My ears pulsate. I get joint pain. Nervous system is a mess. I can hear the modem inside the house as confirmed by my EMF consultant. Sounds like a fast woodpecker, very common for Wi-Fi. The dish is on the neighbor's roof and around 60 feet away. I have tested everything else, even had a home biologist out there. Uh, what The only thing I know about the Starlink um, Wi-Fi is that the modem that comes with it doesn't even have an Ethernet cable. Many people told me I'm getting Starlink. Can I, you know, have Starlink installed on my home and then run cables to the interior of my house? And it requires using Starlink but changing the router. So it's a little bit more technical. But the router that comes with the Starlink setup. Uh, when they sell it to you, doesn't even have an Ethernet port. So it's all Wi-Fi by default. It can be arranged. And I saw some tutorials of people that are trying to do it. I don't know if it works all the time because, of course, it's not something that the company endorses necessarily. But uh, what have you seen, Brian? I know a lot of people are getting on Starlink because this is literally the only way for them to have internet. They, they are in remote areas without any broadband or fiber or anything like that. So what have you seen? Are, are these Wi-Fi crazy? Why, the, are they crazy, the Wi-Fi routers that they, they come with? They're not They're not any crazy. I mean, they're probably strong routers because they're trying to compete with the strong, the strong routers that are on the market, and they don't want people to get a third-party router. They'd rather have them use their own hardware, you know? Yeah. Um, but it's not going to be any different from, like, a normal Wi-Fi router that most companies provide uh, with it, but it's, that doesn't, it's nothing to say that it's not bad. It's still Wi-Fi, right? So, um, but I just looked it up and, uh, what you said is true for the gen two router, the gen okay. two router for Starlink does not have a built-in ethernet ports, but the gen three router does okay. have cool. two built-in gigabyte, uh, gigabit ethernet ports. So, um, and it's, uh, it's located under a removable rubber cover on the back of the router. Okay. That's very cool. So, so yeah, if they get the most updated model, uh, gen three router, which is a 2024 model, then it will have the gigabyte ports, um, on the modem. And that's important because, um, uh, I think that from that you need to connect to the ethernet router. Does the modem have? Wi-Fi or do you need it separate? So yeah, the current hardware has built-in Wi-Fi. So you'd need to probably turn that off on the on the Gen 3 and and or like you can get cages. You know, we, we have a company that builds custom cages for us now. Okay. Uh, for for different uh, products, so we could get one that's built just for the Starlink router. If there's no way to turn it off, I don't know the answer to that question yet. But we do have some customers who have been able to get Starlink and have it to a wired router and not have any issues with Wi-Fi. Um, and the to answer the the rest of the question, the satellite doesn't really have a significant amount of Wi-Fi that it's that's beaming down to it. It's very low energy. It's, um, it's in the gigahertz range, I think between 14 and 17 gigahertz. And the satellite dish is what's collecting that and, and making it so it's more, more of a, a strong signal with the parabolic dish. And in areas where we've had tested Starlink before, we go around the whole property and I almost get nothing outside. Uh, when, when they have it set up in the way that, um, that is like without the Wi-Fi. 
Hey, this is Nick, the EMF guy, Piano. I am the co-creator of the EMF Circle, along with my colleague, Brian Hoyer from Shielded Healing. What you saw today, this short video, is a preview of the longer interview that we did for our Circle members. Every month, we have a masterclass like one of these or a Q&A session with me and Brian most of the time. So you get personal support and attention on your EMF reduction reduction journey. So if you want to reduce EMF because you are personally sensitive or you're just trying to take precautionary measures to better your health and minimize the risk associated with wireless and other types of EMFs, then the EMF circle is the place to be. We have a ton of archives now. We have several months worth of Q&As that you can listen back to. Everything is pre-record is recorded. You can either join live or just listen to the replay. So we have a cars master class. We have a free protection masterclass uh, also that we did, and we're going to have several other masterclasses moving forward. So we hope that you join us inside the EMF circle. Just visit emfcircle.com or click the link under the video to join us. I hope to see you then.